The most controversial show on stage gets a complete makeover, and we have a sneak peek at the brand new Spider-Man. Spider-Man turn off the dark. What a controversy. So expensive. Such an incredibly expensive show. The most expensive Broadway spectacle ever. Uh, got some harsh reviews, took a break, but now it's back after a full makeover, and the man behind the show, U2's Bono, is going to join us to tell us what went wrong and who he thinks is responsible for it. Oh, my goodness. I, I can't believe how many times they've had to remake mm -hmm. that show, but it looks like it might be on its way now. You know, on Broadway, no show on, in history has had so many accidents, cost so much money, sparked as much controversy as the musical Spider-Man turn off the dark. But now the show's been retooled, and Nightline anchor Cynthia McFadden got an exclusive first look backstage at the revamped $74 million musical. You sat down with none other than the man behind the show, Bono, Cynthia? Well, Robin, those involved in the show tell me they've spent more than $5 million more million to retool it, but they're now much happier with it, and audiences seem to be, too. They're getting standing ovations. So Bono and The Edge say it's 80% there right now, but the, by the official opening night on June 14th, it will be 100% what they hope for. It was supposed to be the biggest musical Broadway had ever seen. Spider-Man, with a score by Bono and the Edge, sumptuous sets, and fantastic flying sequences. Just passing through. But after five accidents... There has been another accident. Six delayed openings and some of the worst reviews in Broadway's history, it seemed the death knell had sounded for the show. So I've never read quite so horrific reviews. Things like the New York Times, it may rank among the worst musicals ever made. The Washington Post, shrill, insipid mess. What did you guys think when you read these? It's the sort of stuff I, we were saying backstage. <laughs> I mean, seriously, it might have been a little hard for some other people around here to take that. But we don't disagree with the New York Times. That shocking insight seems to be part of what led to the recent departure of Julie Taymor, the legendary director of The Lion King, who wrote and directed the original version of the show. So what went wrong? I mean, everyone wants to understand what went wrong. Why isn't she still directing the show? Julie would not accept this, but, you know, she got very close to it, so close, perhaps, that she couldn't see it. And we were going out and coming back, and we could see very clearly what we thought were the problems, and she didn't think they were as big a problem as, as we did. And, and sometimes at a point like that, you've just got to just say, look, you are too close, and this is, we're eating more and more of time and other people's money, and we've actually got to stop now and fix this. Last month, Spider-Man's producers closed the show for three weeks and brought in director Phil McKinley to fix it, a man they're calling its creative consultant. So it doesn't bug you a little bit not to be called the director of Spider-Man? No, no. Actually, some people call me Spidey Doc. And I like that. I like Spidey Doc. I actually do. And the show certainly needed a doctor. A song has been added. And the love story has been developed. Well, you know, the last uh, uh, version of Turn Off the Dark had a lot of magic and mysterious stuff. It was beautiful, actually, in so many ways. It just it didn't cohere. This time, you have a really clear... Uh, storyline. You have characters that you're getting to know. The music is, is in a system where it's legible, and there's lots of lots of really obvious stuff um, has been fixed. But don't worry, Spider-Man still flies. This is Chris Tierney, uh, yeah, who nearly died when his harness wasn't properly tied off. I wear like an Under Armour suit. But he's back, and he's airborne. In fact, the whole show seems to fly now. Well, in 
fairness to Julie Taymor, Taymor, Bono and the Edge told me that they still consider the original director one of the greatest creative talents of all time, Robin, and that ultimately the success of the show, if it is successful now when it reopens, will be also a tribute to her. We asked Julie to comment and she declined. How is the relationship now with all of them? Well, I, you know, it's hard. They were all really yeah. close friends and I asked uh, the Edge and Bono, they said they haven't talked to her for a bit, but they are going to invite her to opening night. Oh, that's great. And you have seen it before and after all the changes. What do you think? I have to say I loved it, time two. Oh, all right. Loved it. Well, have a great weekend. You We'd too. love that you brought it to us. And you can see all of Cynthia's report tonight on Nightline after your local late news. And take two. After that streak of heart-stopping falls, the one-time Spider-Man who plummeted and survived, the show is now a go, and we're on the set tonight. From ABC News headquarters, this is ABC World News with Diane Sawyer. Reporting tonight, David Muir. Still ahead on World News this Friday night, the heart-stopping accidents at Spider-Man. Tonight, we're on the set with the actor who plummeted and survived that show now back on. It is the most expensive musical in Broadway history and for a time the most alarming because of the heart-pounding accidents on the set. One of the stars of the show falling almost 30 feet and surviving. Well, they are now trying to hit the reset button, promising it's now safe. And Nightline Cynthia McFadden went behind the scenes. With those spectacular stunts and that comic book past, Spider-Man was supposed to be a mega hit. But plagued by five serious accidents, six delayed openings, and some of the worst reviews in Broadway history, it seemed a few months ago as if the death knell had been sounded for the super expensive musical. So I've never read quite so horrific reviews. Things like the New York Times, it may rank among the worst musicals ever made. The Washington Post, shrill, insipid mess. What did you guys think when you read these? It's the sort of stuff we were saying backstage. <laughs> I mean, seriously. It might have been a little hard for some other people around here to take that. But we don't disagree with the New York Times. And so, two months ago, the original director was pushed out. Right. The producers closed the production for three weeks in order to rework the show. This time, you have a really clear uh, storyline. You have characters that you're getting to know. One thing that stayed the same, spectacular flying sequences like these. How fast are you going when you're, when you're flying? Probably about 40, 45 miles an hour. Hard to believe it was only December when Chris Tierney had a life-threatening accident, falling 30 feet below the stage. I broke three vertebrae, four ribs, my skull, my scapula, and my elbow. You got some pretty good scars out of yeah. it, I hear. Tierney's recovery seemed to have been much faster than the show's, although the newly minted Spider-Man opened for a new round of previews last week to a standing ovation. <laughs> Producers hope is a sign that, like Chris Tierney, Spider-Man's back and better than ever. some harrowing moments. They think they're almost there here. They really do, David. Bono says that he feels the show is 80% fixed now, but promises it's going to be 100% by opening night, June 14th. It's been a long, expensive road. Well, Cynthia, we'll all be watching Nightline tonight. You told me you're going to be revealing even more secrets from behind the scenes of Spider-Man. That's Nightline after your local news.